Okay, so we've got uh, natural medicines which are, con which are superior to conventional medicines in terms of risk reduction. I mean, let's take another look. Pharmacists in the audience, is there any prescription medicine that reduces your risk of getting cancer? In other words, you haven't got cancer yet, but you want to reduce your risk of getting cancer. I don't know of any. I know of prescription medicines that are used if you've got cancer to treat cancer. And by the way, if you look at the studies, the cancer treatment medicines extend your lifespan in cancer patients by three months. And you have to go through often such terrible side effects and pay fortunes of money. The peer-reviewed data shows that you're only getting an increased existence on this planet of three months on average from anti-cancer medicines. So the point is, prescription medicines often wait until you've got the disease. Wait until you've got heart disease before you intervene. Wait until you've got cancer until you intervene. But the point is, what about people that are at high risk of cancer? It's a big killer. What about people that are, have, are on hormone replacement therapy or are on conventional or on oral contraceptives or um, have got a history of breast cancer or are exposed to substances that cause cancer? The, the journal called Toxicology Letters published a big study in this month, in January 2008, showing that a type of plastic called polycarbonate, it's a type of plastic that is located in two things that, we, that we're exposed to. Number one, baby's bottles are made out of polycarbonate plastic. And number two, the linings of the tins of canned food that you eat. The inside lining is made of polycarbonate. Not drinking bottles, drinking bottles that you drink your water out of, that is, that is made out of polyethylene uh, phthalate. PET, you can identify them by looking at the number on the bottom of the bottle. So number one is PET, it's drinking bottles. But the number seven, polycarbonate, they showed in, when exposed to the temperatures of boiling water, releases an estrogen called bisphenol A, and that this estrogen causes damage to babies developing brains and increases risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer, breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men. The Canadian, the Canadian uh, um, uh, government, in two months ago, banned the use of polycarbonate in all babies' bottles. We in this country still use it. Dr. Ruth Rabinovitz, the, M, the IFP MP for Health, has written letters to our health minister in, to be answered. She hasn't yet answered them to explain, given this research, will South Africa not consider the same sort of ban? Now, why is that important? Well, babies' bottles, when, the way moms prepare them, is they put the boiling water into the bottle because it's got to be sterilized, and the water's got to be sterilized. And they let that water cool down so that it's now sterile, and then when it's cool, they add the formula. Not so. That has had huge amounts of time to leach the bisphenol in. That's one of the reasons why if you are going to recommend to moms, or if moms are using babies' bottles, let them boil the water in the kettle and maybe put it into a ceramic teapot. You know one of those old-fashioned ceramic teapots? And let it cool down in that. And then once it's in the fridge or whatever, and then once it's cool, empty that into a sterilized bottle. You can happily sterilize the baby's bottle with boiling water, pour it out, let it cool, and then add your cold water. It's, it's a thing that happens at high temperature. But guess how tin food is cooked, ladies and gentlemen? Tin food is cooked by boiling the food inside the tin. Those chickpeas or corn or whatever you eat, it's not added cooked. It's added raw in the bottom with the water on the top. It's then cooked in the can, and it expands in the can. Polycarbonate is also used in those bottles. Bisphenol A is an environmental estrogen. If you are exposed to estrogens from hormone replacement therapy, from oral contraceptives, from environmental estrogens, from substances like petrochemicals which have estrogenic effects, if you have a history of breast cancer, you are an accident waiting to happen, especially if you have all of those things combined. Must you, knowing that you're an accident waiting to happen, Wait until you get cancer to those so that you can go into the expense of anti-cancer medicines and live an extra three months with terrible side effects. No. If we, look at the, if we look at the studies, there are natural substances which reduce your risk of cancer. We know, and this is, and this is peer-reviewed data, another thing I'm at pains to point out to, to people, is that there, is, there are huge amounts of peer-reviewed scientific data to show the effectiveness of natural medicines. For example, we know that cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, reduce risk of hormone-dependent cancers, prostate cancer and breast cancer particularly, but also um, uh, cervical cancer and also, interestingly, colon cancer. Now, why? Because these cruciferous vegetables contain things called indoles, indole compound, compounds, of which there are two, indole-3-carbonyl, I3C, and diindole-methane. These are powerful cancer risk reducers. 
and there have been studies done on these compounds isolated from, uh, um, from cruciferous vegetables. There are other compounds which are shown to have profound anti-cancer effects, and they work via different mechanisms, some via antioxidant mechanisms, some via what we call apoptotic mechanisms. In other words, they cause the cancer cell to commit suicide. What's supposed to happen in your body when you have a cancer cell develop is it's supposed to identify itself as being cancerous and self-destruct. That's what's supposed to happen. And then the immune system also is supposed to take out deviant cancer cells. And you're actually producing cancer cells throughout your life. But the point is your body takes care of them, either through the immune system destroying them or the cancer cell falling on its sword when it realizes, hang on a sec, I'm a cancer cell and I need to, um, and, I, and I should not be in existence. But sometimes the, the, that trigger doesn't work. And that trigger is called apoptosis. And there are certain substances which cause apoptosis to occur in cancer cells. There are other substances that, that, cause, that have an anti-angiogenic effect. In other words, starve the cancer cell of oxygen by preventing blood vessels growing in cancer cells or surrounding cancer cells and feeding them oxygen. And these are the substances. There are, there are a number of them, but really the good ones are curcumin. Curcumin is an extract which we find from turmeric spice. Getting people to cook with two heaped teaspoons of turmeric per day reduces cancer. Or you can use the curcumin extract. It's a 95% purified extract. Quercetin. Quercetin is a natural extract found in apples and onions. But once again, you can extract it and you can put it into a capsule. Coenzyme Q10. Selenium. EGCG, which is a type of polyphenol uh, EGCG found from green tea. Um, what else? Lycopene. Um, the, uh, dienylmethane. Dim. So what we've, and, and these aren't anecdotal. These aren't maybe they work or maybe they don't. These are scientifically proven of which there's peer-reviewed data, and I've got all of that data um, um, available if anybody would like to see it. And so what we've done is we've said, it's, it's, not about just, it's not about just treating cancer. It's about reducing the risk of cancer if you're at risk. You know, if you've got a choice, if you're a little frog, I know this is a stupid analogy, but I haven't thought of another one yet. If you're a little frog and you've got a choice to either plop, sit in the middle of the road and just live there, in the middle of the N1, or plop, sit on the side of the road and live there, which would be the wisest thing to do if you're a frog? Sit on the side of the road, hey, because if you sit in the middle of the road, although you're fine for a while, in a few hours you're going to be a squashed dead frog. Okay, if you've got a choice to either sit in the path of high risk of dying from cancer because you're living a lifestyle, you've got cancer running in the family, you're exposed to all of these hormones, or you've got a choice of using substances that reduce your risk living on the side of the road, reducing the risk of being hit by that cancer car, which person in their sane mind would choose, knowing that, to stand in the middle of the, of the road? That's effectively what you're doing. You're putting yourself in a high-risk environment by not looking at reducing the risk.